Hello and welcome to the string class video, junior string class video on time signatures and this time we're going to go a little bit more complicated so we're going to the next level up. Um, so those of you who are in sort of grade one theory class this might be a bit of a stretch and new things for you but um, you can just follow on with what we're doing um, and let the details slightly wash over you. Those of you who are doing grade two theory, this will be linking in uh, with some of the time signature work that you're doing. Um, so, as always, we need to do our warm up. So, uh, let's start top down this time. So, let's get our heads going. And we're gonna do a noble neck, moving our head from side to side. Just really gently, don't force it. And then we're gonna shrug our shoulders. Up to our ears and down, up to our ears and down, give them a little shimmy, I can't do that without moving my hips, okay, and then let's get our hands going, so we're going to flick off, get, really get the fingers moving, and then we're going to get our forearms warmed up by doing some big grabs of air, okay, and then we're going to just Shimmy our arms around, let them swing nice and loose. Remember keeping your trunk nice and steady so we're not letting our backs arch. We're tucking our bottoms under, putting the bottom of our rib cage down so we've got a small gap here and that's our trunk and then our arms are like our branches swinging around. Okay, um, get your knees moving into the action so that they're not locked. And on there, then we're going to just go up onto our toes, Whoop. not let your ankles roll out, and back down again, once more, up onto your toes, back down again, feet hip width apart, and then just lift up your toes, and feel the weight going through your balls of your feet, and the heel of your foot, right through the floor, like some roots of a tree, and um, there we go, so we've got planted feet, bouncy knees, um, strong tummy, floppy arms, and loose, noble neck. Okay, right, so that's our posture and our warm up, and our fingers are nice and ready to go. Let's go back to our uh, warming up our arms individually in the choreography. So, choreography we think of in terms of dancing, the movements that we're going to do sort of before we put the music in. So again, I'm taking off my shoulder rest here just because I find it helps me keep everything more fluid while I'm supporting the, the, the instrument with my other hand. Um, but that's something to check with your teacher. The reason is we don't want the shoulder coming up. So I want to be able to keep this arm nice and flowy like we did in the warm ups. Uh, for cellists, you're gonna sit down, but we want the weight going through those balls of your feet and um, through the seats. So no, slumping, we need to keep this bit of the core nice and steady. Okay, so get into your instrument positions. Um, remember that the instrument rests on your collarbone. Here we go, and we're using our bowing arm to support it. We're in upper string um, so that everything can stay nice. Just wobble out your arm, cellist, give your arm a wobble without collapsing and keeping your weight nice on your um, and alert on your seat. Okay, so we're gonna stroke the neck of the violin remember, and, and the cello, remember, um, thumb goes, sort of traces the black bit here and wrist stays still, not locked, just nice and loose and s but not really getting involved. Cellos go down the neck of the, of the cello there, thumb goes down the back. Okay, so we're doing, keep rubbing and then the elbow gets involved. So for the violins to do neck, elbow swings under and back, and elbow under, back, so neck, elbow, out, in, elbow, out, cellos, you're going to go down and then the elbow comes round, down and round, okay, and then the last bit, violins and upper strings, your wrist now gets involved, goes to the top and back, just do that a few times, just to get used to that wrist joint moving when you're at the top, make sure this stays nice and relaxed, you're not moving, Get, make, make sure your posture hasn't got all twisted. So violin stays like a shelf and your wrist is just moving here. And cellos, you explore taking your thumb round 
and just sort of stroking that bit of the cello so that you get used to your arm going down without hunching over the instrument. Okay, so we're going to do neck, elbow, wrist or thumb, wrist comes back, thumb goes back round, elbow, neck, neck, elbow, wrist, and we're doing nice fluid movements. Here we go, make sure you don't hold your breath, make sure you don't lock any other bits of your body. To see the rest of my body is nice and still, and it's my arm, and the shoulder isn't coming up. I'm just swinging on that shoulder joint a bit like a, a puppet. Yeah. Okay. Um, then we're going to do taps from our um, knuckles. So just away from the instrument, try drawing your knuckles back like that, and then just let them relax and see how they spring forwards. And you don't have to do anything. They just go bing, bing. Try not to lock your thumb while you do it. So just try and keep your thumbs sort of relaxed and bring them up and bing, bing, bing. So it's the, and can you see those tendons working? Back of my hand, yeah? Those are our little springs. And when we want to play fast things, our fingers work like little hammers, like little bridges, and they move from the back of the hand, yeah? Not flappy big things like this, but back of the hand. Okay, so that's what we're warming up. Um, now in our warm up, uh, letting those muscles get to get to move. So, um, if you want to go to the bottom string, set your elbow so that your fingers are hovering over the lower string, and just move them from the knuckles. Tap 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 tap. tap, tap. You can support your elbow if you want to, or you can support the instrument. Okay. And then next one. Remember, we're halfway up the instrument. You should feel these muscles really working and these tendons springing. And now just practice those different elbow levels, just moving the fingers over. So the fingers aren't moving to reach the string, the elbow delivers the hand to the right level and then the fingers are free to move. Real. Okay, lovely. Bowing hand. Um, so again, Shows, you don't have to have your hands set in this position when you're doing el um, elbow work. You can have it by your side. You can have it just resting um, loosely um, in a comfortable position. Uh, um, violinists, I like to sort of go halfway up the instrument just so that this elbow is nice. We have to sort of work a bit harder when our hand's down here. So if we go up here, then it just feels a bit more equal and balanced. So remember how we find balance point. Let's just do the same thing again. Let's get our bows. Oh, that's my doggy in the background. Uh, oh, I did a little bit too fast because I was distracted. Let me close the door so that we don't have Bertie in the background. There we go. Okay, let's go in again, see if we can find our balance point. There we go, got it. Yeah, and just very gently feel that. That's how the bow should feel when it's in your hand, when it's on the string at the balance point. Like it just can do its own thing. And you're just very gently. Okay, so find the balance point. I'm gonna come down here for this. And we're gonna set our bow and cuddle, okay? So just really feel like the bow is nice and balanced and you're just playing with it in your hand. Not going anywhere because it's balanced yeah so then we tap our thumb tap our middle fingers tap our little finger tap our first fingers cello your bow holds slightly different um, but your thumb uh, you're using the inside edge of your bow and um, but it, all of these fingers still need to be able to move and and, and sort of be free okay um, right so we're nice and balanced uh, we've done our bow cuddle and now we're just going to do some silent bows and upper strings, remember, we need to have elbow, wrist, knuckles in line so that it, the weight of the arm goes across all of the strings, no matter what string. So again, it's like this elbow, Kate found the different levels, delivered the fingers at the different level. This elbow delivers the fingers, uh, delivers the bow to the, to the correct string. So we're just going, just practicing those levels. 
without anything else to think about. Great, okay, so body's warmed up, each arm is warmed up, knows what it's doing, let's get on. So, uh, I didn't do much detail, if you're going to put your shoulder rest on, you can pause the video and put it back on now. Um, we didn't do that much detail on the slow deep end bows, I'm going to just do a tiny bit more detail on that today. Um, let's start on the D string, but we are going to move to the G string, but let's start with the D string so that everybody's in a balanced position. So get to your balance point, move the bow right to the deep end. The nice thing is when you're on the bridge, you know that your sounding point, that's where you choose to put your bow, you know that your sounding point is staying the same because it's right on the bridge, okay? So to get a nice sound here, we need to put a little bit of weight in and we need to move the bow quite slowly. Um, now, when we're at the balance point, everything should feel sort of loose and neutral. And we're going to start moving the bow. And you'll be feeling, as you get to the tip of the bow, this finger has to start slightly turning in and pressing down a little bit. A bit like you're turning your door handle, yeah? So that you keep the weight in the string. So, off we go. So look at your bow on the string, check it's staying right near the bridge and feel that weight going into that first finger. And when we get to the tip of the bow, stop. Now, what we're wanting is not for the bow to come behind, or to, we want to try and keep um, a, a violence and upper strings, your bow comes away from you. Okay, but we're not, we're, so we, we got, even if we're right next to the bridge, we don't want a dodgy angle. Okay, so we're sort of just a bit more than a right angle there. Okay, now we're going to go back again. So the weight is on that first finger. This, hardly any weight here on our little finger. And now let's go back super slow. Keep watching. As you get past the balance point, the weight should start to shift in your hand. And go right to the silver okay so that you'll get you right to the heel of the bow um, and what you'll feel is that all the weight is on that little finger okay so when we're doing these slow bow exercises at the deep end I really want you to be feeling how the weight shifts in your bowing hand okay so we're now going to move to the G string so we're going to change our elbow level um, and we're going to do some slow, deep bows because that's what's really good to make a nice harmonic sound. But we're going to find our halfway point. So this is our G string, that's our bridge, that's where it's attached to the top. And halfway down, exactly, we've got a harmonic. So get your hand just near the body of the instrument, swing the elbow to a G string level. So violins, that's going to be round, um, cello, so that's going to be sort of, yours, yours is more in the middle and see if you can find that halfway point. Now, what we're practicing is putting the finger down and off and down and off in the same place. And our ears are telling us whether we've got it right or wrong. If it's not a nice, clear harmonic sound, you've, you have to adjust your finger. But because it's really light, you should be able to adjust it really easily. Um, let's start at the balance point. But this hand is light, this hand is quite strong, okay? So let's go down bow, slow, deep end bows. And then start playing around with your harmonics. Taking the finger off and on. But trying to keep the sound going with your slow bow. So your brain is doing very different things at the moment. Try and move your finger faster, on and off. Bow going. And try not to get any tension in this bit of your body. Make sure your elbows are still nice and relaxed. Lots to think about. One more bow. Notice how the harmonic sound carries on even after you've taken your finger off. Watch the vibrations of the string. curious about how you can make the, the, the string vibrate in loads of different patterns, okay? Um, now, 
uh, you might need, uh, if you're an upper string player, you might need a sibling or a grown up to help at this point because what we're going to do is we are using the bow and we are going up the violin. Now, what I don't want to do is create a lot of tension here. Cellists, you should be fine going up to your halfway harmonic. Um, if you, but if you want to get a grown up or a sibling to hold your scroll for you while you're doing this, um, I'd suggest you stop the video and go and ask somebody to help just so that it's the same as holding it here it's so that you're not feeling tight or tense about it okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to slide you can choose any finger it could be your first finger your second finger we're going to go slide a really light finger on the string up remember up the violin elbow comes round and then the wrist just brings it to the halfway point and back down again. And we're just gonna stroke the string up to the halfway point. Just practice it, practice it like this first. So going, stroke it really gently up to where you think the halfway point is. See my, if I can make, so my wrist isn't getting involved. Fingers are really light on the string. That's it, elbow comes under and then the wrist just to get that last little bit of wrist comes back, elbow comes back round, fingers slide down. So we're just exploring the string with our hand, okay? And cello's yours is going to go lightly on the string and down, and then the elbow comes round to bring it over. Okay, um, so we're only going to go to the halfway harmonic point and we're just going to create some alien sounds. So imagine that there's a piece of elastic between your first finger or whichever finger at the end of your bow. And we're going to pull the hand up. And then we're going to push it back down again. And again. And we're going to push it back. I notice I've come slightly more into the um, into the middle lane here and I've been using a slightly faster bow, so I'm not having to think about my bowing so much. Right, let's see if we can speed that up a bit. So we're gonna pull the hand up. And we're gonna push it back down again. And what you should hear is these do 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 as our finger touches the different um, harmonics that we that we can do now we're going to do that in more detail in another video um, but the strongest ones should be about here a quarter of the way up the string a third of the way up the string so we're going to do it just once more and I want you to just stop with me when we get to those ones so there we go there's mine and we're just going to tap it open string it should be two octaves above now we're going to move the hand a bit higher. There's our third of the way. It should be the same as our D string. Now we're going to carry on our journey all the way up to the halfway harmonic. There we go. We're back to the halfway harmonic. And now we're going to pull the hand down again. There we go, we found the D string one. Test the D string. Move it down a bit more. There's our there's our quarter way one and move the hand down. Okay? Don't try and do that on your own without somebody holding your scroll if you're an upper string player um, at the moment, because I don't want to create any of this, but it's quite a fun thing to do. Um, as your warm-up. Okay, um, so last time we um, talked about how our scale fits on to our string. So if we have G is Do, um, A is going to be Re, B is going to be Mi, Mi and Fa are close together. I've put a little cross so that we know that there's a harmonic there. There you go. Then we have D, um, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, that has another little harmonic, La, Ti, Do, and that is our top G. We have F sharp, E. There are other videos that are based on the G string 
uh, are based on G major and how it fits with the piano keyboard and all that. So we're not going to go into that today. Um, you can go and watch one of those videos if you'd like to do that. Okay, so we've got Do, Re, Mi, Fa close together. So, La, Ti and Do and Ti and Do are close together. So we have a semitone and a semitone. Um, and if we divide the scale in half, actually, you, they're exactly the same. Gap, gap, close, and then we have gap, gap, close. So what we can do is we turn, put the D here. D, do. Have I lined them up better this time? Okay. So, so now we're splitting the scale over the two strings. So D, E, F sharp, G. Okay. Now we're going to do something a little bit different here um, today. Um, we're going to carry on using these harmo this harmonic idea. So this harmonic that is left here is our quarter way harmonic. Okay. It creates two octaves above the open string. Okay. And it's really good for tuning, if this is our Do, we can tune our Fa, and that's our So, and then we can tune our top Do, okay? And just create a framework that then we build the rest of the scale into. Um, for everybody, these are our open strings and our first finger. And then for the cellos, it's third finger and fourth finger, and for the violins and upper strings, it's second finger and third finger, okay? Right, so let's build our scale. So we're going to use the middle lane, so we're not worrying too much about our bow control, we're just sort of doing nice, fluid, easy bows. And we're going to do our open string G. And then we're going to hover our third finger, or our fourth finger, where we think the C is. And we should get that noise. Try it again, take it off. Hover your third finger or your fourth finger. And then melt into the string. And we should get a C. Try it again, open G. Hover the third finger or the fourth finger where the C is. And melt in. playing there is called a fourth, a perfect fourth. There are four notes. One, two, three, four. And it's the same as away in a manger. So that's the that's what we're listening for. So open G, hover the finger, and melt in. Okay, now we're going to try exactly the same pattern for the top half of the scale. So open D is so. Hover the third or the fourth finger, depending on what instrument you're playing. That's the notes you should hear. Let's just try that. Open G. Hover the third. And now we melt into the string. And that to get our top G. Perfect. And just check. The nice thing about having this G is that we can check it with the open string G. So then we... Play the open D, find the harmonic, melt into the string, and then check with your open string. And if you play that top G really in tune, you should see your G string, open G, vibrating. So the whole instrument is ringing. Okay, so we've tuned this note, G. G, C, D, G, Do, Fa, So, Do. And in our ears, that gives us a sort of framework. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add um, the other notes in, okay? But when we get to these notes, what I want us to do is just release our fingers, check that we've got it in line with the harmonic, and then put it back down again, and then we're going to carry on check this note with the open string, check the harmonics underneath it and put it back down again. So we're going to play the whole scale, but we're just checking that our framework is still in place. So let's play open G. 
into the string and then play the open D first finger F sharp and then third finger or fourth finger whichever instrument you are release for the harmonic melt back in and check with your open G hear a ring. Okay, so that sounds really detailed just for doing uh, one of the first scales we've ever learned, but getting really good tuning and listening to your instrument because it talks to you when you're in tune. Um, our ears are really, really getting some deep level stuff. I still do my really basic scales um, even though I learnt them 30 odd years ago. Okay, so we've got our G major nice and in tune. Um, we are going to add, um, we're going to do it in thirds like we did last time. Okay, so we're going to go deep end bowing, uh, G major. I'm going to start off eight beats per bow. Remember we talked about how the weight feels in hand, uh, for, um, for, as we go through our deep end bowing, okay? So nice and slow, feel it on your little finger and your first finger. I'm going to do the first two notes by myself. And then I'm going to ask you to come in and play in thirds with me so it sounds nice and in tune. So, one, two, three, four, not yet, six, wait, two, three, get ready, five, six, get ready to play, G. extra layer to my rhythm tree this time. Uh, so we've got doo, 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 um, number of beats. We have four beats in a semi breathe or a four or or. We have two beats in a minim or a two woo. We have one beat in a crotchet or a tar. We've got um, half a beat for each of these quavers so that's half a beat half a beat half a beat half a beat when they're on their own as an actual half beat they look like that okay and then we join them up with a beam 
And then these ones are new ticker tickers or semi quavers. And each little one of these is a quarter of um, um, a crotchet beat. Now, if I, we have two little hands hanging down for each of these. So when they're not beamed, that's what they look like, okay? But otherwise, it's quite tricky to read that in a big group. So then we beam them across these things here, a beam, and that helps us read it visually in the music, okay? So we've got um, our beats, how long these last. Now we had code numbers last time. Code number for a semi-breathe is a one, for a minim is a two, because we've got two. We've got four crotchets, we've got eight quavers, and then these funny things along the bottom, if we counted four lots of four, we would have 16. So these are our code numbers for our time signatures, okay? Um, so last time we had to go at playing them with an arpeggio. This time we're going to play them with a pentatonic scale. Now, pentagon means five-sided shape. Pent means five. So a pentatonic scale is like a normal scale, but with all of the close notes, these semitones taken away. So um, I'm going to take away this C. So we've got G, A, B. D, E, no F sharp. So we haven't got any semitones in a pentatonic scale no close notes, okay? So the notes we're going to be playing are G, A, B, D, and E. So let's just do that together so we can hear what a pentatonic scale sounds like. So we're going to do G, A, B, going to give you let's say 30 seconds with me just to play you don't have to keep the same bowing as me play around with those notes sound quite folky or it can sound sort of um, a, a pentatonic scale is used in a lot of sort of Chinese music but it's also used in a lot of sort of Scottish folk music um, so we're going to use the pentatonic scale to play these one two three four five levels okay so we're starting on a down bow on a G okay and uh, we'll have four beats in one two three four one two Minims on an A. One, two, one, two, B. Ta, D. And then at E. And now we're going to do exactly the same but backwards. So we're going to start with a semi breathe on an up bow. And we're going to play the pentatonic scale backwards. So we start with an E. D and B and A and right at the heel, open G. So we're going to do that again. So we go up the pentatonic scale and down the pentatonic scale. And we play this once through starting on a down bow and once through starting on an up bow. When we get to the semi quavers, you see I use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the bow at the tip and tiny, tiny, tiny bit of bow at the bottom. So we're making sure we use all of our bow. If your heel of your bow isn't working very well at the moment, it might be because you haven't got enough rosin. So uh, stop the video, make sure you've got a nice, even rosin all over your bow. Okay, let's start with a G. So make sure elbow's at the right level, bow cuddles sorted, weights on the little finger, off we go. One, two, three. A half bow. One, two, one. B. Quarter bow. Open D. Elbow should be working here and little bows. And now we're going to do one long bow. D. B. Water 
well done, you've just played your rhythm tree. Okay, so the next bit we're going to do is, we've done our pentatonic scale, uh, we're now going to look at time signatures. So, we've got, let's move this away. We're going to look at triple time, three different types of triple time. So triple time means that there are three beats in a bar. Now we're going to change the type of beats that we're counting. So the top number is how many beats in a bar is going to stay the same. In each version we're going to have, we're going to have three beats in a bar. So we are in triple time. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the code number on the bottom. So, first off, we're going to have the one that we looked at last time, which is four. So that is our code number for three tiles or three crotchets in a bar. Then we're going to have a look at what happens if we put a two at the bottom. Now that is a code number. The two is a code number for a two woo or a minim. So there'll be three minims in a bar. Okay. And then we're going to have a look at if we had an eight here. So an eight, let's look down our code numbers, eight is code number for a quaver or a T, okay? So we'd have eight quavers or eight TTs in a bar, okay? So um, we're going to have the same piece of music but we're going to write it in these three different meters. So all of them will have a sort of swingy triple time feeling but with our instruments we're going to find a different way of playing each one to um, to sort of show how the meter creates a different sense in the music, okay? So, you know, as instrumentalists, we need to be able to start creating these characters in what we're doing. Okay, so our very first rhythm is gonna go ta, 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 ti, 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 ta, 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 tu, wu, ta, okay? I'm gonna add Three, four time. T, 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 ta, 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 two, ta. I'm going to put double bar line at the end, and then we do what we did last time in that we're splitting up into three crotchets in every bar. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Okay, so that's our rhythm. Remember, we have a strong beat on the first beat of every bar. And I'm going to use uh, an Italian term for this. I'm going to, uh, my, this piece of music is going to be andante. An, dan, te. Now, andante means walking pace. Now, it's not walking pace when you're late for school or when you're running for the bus. It's a real country stroll type pace okay so let's have a go at clapping it goes one two three ta 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 ti 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 ta 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 tu wu ta and that last note's really nice and light and we're letting the, the the meter the triple meter really sort of flow so imagine that you were sort of ambling along we're going to do it on a G string. Um, so remember, to get the emphasis, we either press a little bit harder or move the bow a bit faster, just really subtly, or a bit of both to get that swing feel. So one, two, three. Ta, 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 ta. So I've got to say andante is an Italian word. A lot of the, the instructions on how to play something um, we use in music are Italian. So you get to learn two things for once. Um, now let's make that a bit more interesting and use the notes from our pentatonic scale. So let me write them up again. You can choose a G, an A, a B, a D or an E. Now if you're feeling a bit nervous, you can just pick one of those notes and play it through. If you're feeling a bit more adventurous, you can make a little tune. Um, I'm going to make a little tune, so whatever you play, it will sound interesting against mine. Okay, so are we ready? One, two, 
three. Okay, should we try it once more? One, two, three. I did something different each time. I don't know what I'm going to do before I start, but I know that those are the notes I can choose from. Okay, so we've done an andante, a walking pace piece in 3-4. That is something you would come across quite a lot in the music that you're playing. Now, we're going to change the time signature to three minim beats in a bar. Okay, so it's still triple time, but we've got to double all of these note values. So instead of these lasting one beat, they have to last two beats. Instead of these ones being half beats, they're going to be tars. And that tar is going to do two root. These crotchets are going to turn into minims. And then this minim has to double, so instead of two beats, it has to last four beats. And this tar beat has to last two beats. So now it's exactly the same rhythm, but everything is being stretched and the length of time it takes is doubled. Now sometimes when we have a two on the bottom, it doesn't actually mean everything has to be slower. It means actually we're just counting in bigger beats. But for this for this, what we're doing today is we're going to turn this into a more um, a slow movement that's got three beats in a bar, but we want to feel a real stretch to it. So I'm going to call it a lento. Now a lento is slow, okay? And so when we're thinking these beats, we're gonna think one and two and three and one and two and three. And because the beats are sort of, we're thinking in minims, okay? We're thinking in these bigger two, 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 okay? So three and one, two and three and, okay. So let's just clap it first. The same applies for the big beat on the first beat of the bar. Um, sometimes you might have a different type of, these are often dance movements if you're doing something like a saraband, which we'll be doing in junior room. Orchestra later in the year, the emphasis actually ends up on the second beat of the bar. But for the moment, let's just keep it simple. So, two and three and one and 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 two and three. So it's still the same sort of rhythm within each other, but it didn't feel like a sort of country stroll anymore. It feels much more sort of serious. So how are we going to put that onto our instruments? Um, probably going to need a little bit more bow. Um, we might want to go a little bit closer to the deep end and sort of sink in and get a richer sound um, for those emphasis on the first beat of the bar. So let's just have a little experiment, okay? So uh, two and three. Yeah, so it has a slightly more sort of serious feel, but that's also because we've been told to play it slow, okay? Um, Let's do, okay, um, so I'm going to say slow and we'll do dynamics at another time. All right, so we're just going to go sort of listening for sound quality. So uh, let's do what we did before, pentatonic scale, any notes you fancy of the pentatonic scale, you can just stick to one. I'm going to play around with it. We'll do it twice. Okay, so here's the first time. Two and three and one. Have another think. 
Let's have another go. So two and three and one. So that's our three two meter and now we're going to change it again so we've got a three eight meter so now what we're going to have to do is imagine we had our original one i'm going to turn it back to how it was for three four so Ta 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 ti 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 ta 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 tu wu ta. Now, when we've got three eight, we're counting in quavers. So we need three quavers in a bar, three ti ti's in a bar. Um, so we're instead of doubling the rhythm values, we're halving the rhythm values. So instead of three ta's here, I need three quavers. Now, most of you are used to seeing quavers in pairs or ti ti's in pairs. But for this rhythm, for this type of meter, we can beam them together in a, in a group of three. It still means they're still quavers because it's got one line over the top. Now, we've got quavers here. We need to half them. Now, half the value of a, um, of a quaver is a semi-quaver. Okay? So we can beam the notes, but we double beam them. And that means we're halving the length. Okay. And again, I could either group them together like this, or I could have that one on its own. Okay, I think I'll probably do, I'll beam them together. Okay, so that goes, uh, T, 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 ticker, ticker, T. Quaver, 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 semi-quaver, semi-quaver, quaver. Okay. These ones, these tars need to turn into quavers because we're halving the value. Half of a two woo, that turns into a tar, and then this one is a one on its own, okay? So we've changed a three four rhythm into a three eight rhythm by making halving the values of all the rhythm notes. Okay, so this now to me doesn't seem like a slow movement necessarily. This feels a three eight, sometimes when you have a quaver beat at the bottom. It feels much more lively, like a jig, okay? Um, so we're going to have a, a vivace. Now, first time I announced I was playing a vivace, I said I was playing a vivace, a vivace by Vivaldi. It's Italian, the cut at the end doesn't make a s sound like it does here, it's a ch. So it's vivace, vivace, say it with me, vivace, and it means lively, okay? Like viva, viva is life, life, lively. So if we were going to play this a bit like a sort of folk or a jig dance, so all of the sort of three times feel a bit like dances, um, I would go at the balance point, yeah, where the bow naturally, if you're cuddling it, not gripping it, the bow will and let your elbow swing. The bow has a natural bounce around here. So if we were going to, let's, let's, uh, sorry, let's just do the clapping to get the lively feel. Remember, we still have the strong beat of the bar, so it goes one, two, three. Tee, 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 ta, tee. Should try that again? One, two, three. Tee, 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 tee. And then already you're sort of feeling it. Uh, the 3-8 feel is very different to the 3-2 feel, even though we've got the same sort of proportions of the rhythm. Okay, so let's try that on an open string. So we're going to go one, two, three. Two, two, two. Two, Now, as we're getting a bit more advanced, we really want the down bow at the start of each bar because... Um, and where possible, because we want that sort of strong beat. So we could go down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, 
So I'm going to put in a little bowing there. You might want to pause the video and try that a few times. Down, up, up, so that we get a strong beat. Down bows tend to help with our strong beats. Down, up, down, up, down. Now here we've got an up. We could go down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. But let's just go. We can still lift and be strong with an up beat, with an up bow, but this is probably the more important one um, as it's the end of the phrase. So let's just really slowly, at the balance point, short bows, try that bowing. So down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Let's try it on the G string, so change your elbow level a bit faster. One, two, three. Down, up. patterns of quavers to get the emphasis because it's going a bit faster you you often change your bowing rather than just the bow speed and the bow weight by having a down bow at the start it feels a bit more sort of a bit more jiggy okay so now let's just do a little bit of the pentatonic work uh, to create a jig so we're going to do it um, choose any note of the pentatonic scale you want I'm going to play a little tune with it um, so one, two, three. So we've gone from a slow lento to a really lively sort of folk dance, and especially because it's pentatonic, it sounds about right. Um, again, have a go, pick a note or make a little tune. We'll do it one more time. One, two, three. today a warm-up getting ourselves ready we have done um, deep end bowing really understanding how the weight fits in your hand we've looked at halfway harmonics and quarter way harmonics and a third way harmonics we'll do that in more detail another day um, but but exploring the harmonics up your string for alien noises getting someone to help you hold the scroll if you need to um, for the upper string players uh, we've looked at a slightly extended rhythm tree, so we've got semi-quavers in there and how to sort of do that in our bows, so long bows to really short bows using the whole of our bow. Um, we've looked at what a pentatonic scale is, um, but also how to tune a major scale by creating our do and our fa and our la and our thing, so creating a framework for our scale and really learning how to listen to our instruments when we're playing our scales and make sure that they're in tune. Um, and then we've had one rhythm, the same rhythm pattern, but we have done it in three different meters, three, four meter, three, two meter, and three, eight meter with three different Italian um, things. So an andante, a walking pace for our three, four, um, a lento, a slow piece for our three, two, when we were counting in minims, and then a vivace uh, for our three, eight rhythm when we're counting in quavers. Um, so those are how those different bottom numbers start to impact how we play a piece of music. Um, when you get a bit further on, sort of grade two, grade three, you're, you need to be looking at those bottom numbers. They're not just going to be four. Uh, you could be counting in different values and, and that can really affect how you communicate the music and what you're trying to get across. And never ignore the Italian... Uh, phrase that tells you how to play it. The, the composer's trying to communicate with you and your job and their audience and your job as the musician is to try and sort of bring that to life. Okay, so um, see you next time.